I'm just going to wait a minute. It's, uh, we've been here now about two and a half minutes. So I'm going to give her maybe a couple of more seconds and then we're going to get started. Good morning. I met. Good evening, Carol. Carol Green, bless you. Carol, st uh, I, I done took the clock away now. All right. Good to see you. Glad to have you on here tonight. We're going to be blessed. Aaron Brown, how are you doing, Aaron? Good to see you, son. Sister Ruthie Garrell, bless you, daughters. Good to see you. Good to have you with us again tonight. You're always there anyway. God bless you. Love you. Miss you. Praying for you. Praying for you all. So get your Bibles and let's get started in the word of the Lord for tonight. And uh, it's, a, it's going to be a, a, a life-changing word that I'm going to be ministering on. Uh, so get your Bibles and we're going to go to the book of a uh, Song of Solomon and we're going to get started at Song of Solomon chapter 8 uh, verses uh, 6 and 7. Song of Solomon verses 6, chapter 8 verse 6 and 7. And uh, so we're going to get started. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you and I praise you for this opportunity to minister to these your sheep to feed your lambs and sheep with knowledge and understanding of the word of God. I thank you, Father God, for revelations will flow without being stopped, blocked, or hindered by any demonic attack or any demonic distraction. In Jesus' name, I decree and declare that the word of the Lord will fall on the good ground of the hearts of each and one that's under the hearing my voice, that they will grow in knowledge, that they will grow in understanding. In Jesus' name. And Father, we bless you and we thank you for it. And I bind up every demonic spirit to try to hinder or do anything uh, uh, against this broadcast. I render them helpless now. And I cover this broadcast. I cover the, our lives with the blood of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, for a word that will proceed out of my mouth. In Jesus' name, you speak, and I'll speak for you, Lord. And I give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. Amen. Good evening, Angie. Get your Bibles, everybody. Let's go to the book of Song of Solomon, chapter 8. Verse six and seven kind of hit touched on this the last time I, I went on Facebook Live, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go through it tonight. And it, Song of Solomon chapter eight verse six and seven it reads as thus: He said, "Set me as a seal upon thine heart, as a seal upon thine arm, for love is strong is as death." Love is strong as death. And how many of you know when you die, death holds you? You don't you don't just come back, go and come, you get ready. So love is strong as death. It's powerful, it's strong, it's mighty, it's awesome. Jealousy is cruel as the grave. The coals thereof or coals of fire, which has a most vehement flame. Many waters cannot quench love. Many problems, many difficulties, many trials, many persecution, many lies, many gossips, many backbiters cannot quench love. Neither can the floods drown it. You can't destroy love. Love will destroy anything that come against you. Neither can the floods drown it. If a man would give all the substance of his house for love, it would utterly be content because you can't buy love. It's one thing you cannot buy love. You can't buy it from a man and you can't buy it from a woman. Amen. And you can't buy it from God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Listen at this. There's all kinds of metals, minerals, and stones in the earth. But if I'm not mistaken, the most valuable of all these metals and stones is gold. Gold is a very, very expensive commodity. But if I'm not mistaken, the most valuable, all these these materials, all these uh, uh, stones and, and, and currencies, I meant these uh, metals, is gold itself. Because a country's currency is backed by its system and how strong its gold system is. If they have a weak gold system, then their, their, their financial system is going to be weak. There's also all kinds of, uh, you know, we've got all kinds of... Uh, uh, metals, valuable metals. You got silver, you got gold, you got bronze, you got brass, different types. There's also all kinds of love in the in the in the world. There's also all kinds of love that's in this world right now. We have filial love, which is friendship. We have sturgio, which is natural affection as between brothers and sisters, 
or mother and child. Then we have eros, which is sexual love. Then the most important, we got agape, the God kind of love. So the most valuable and important of these is agape, the God kind of love. This is the most valuable and the most important type of love that we as believers should have. Good evening, Sister Watson. Amen. That's the most important love that a believer should have is agape love. Now, nothing wrong with the others, but the most powerful of these is agape. Very few people have agape love. Love without conditions. Love you in spite of what you can or cannot do for me. Love you, uh, 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 even if you can't do nothing for me, I'm going to still love you. Or what you did to me or what you did not do, I still love you. That's agape love. Love me if you, I love you even if you wrong me. R love you even if you, 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 you lied on me. That's agape love. Could you imagine now? God loves us after all the craziness that we've done with unconditional love. Love you without conditions. There was nothing for you to do to make God love you. He just loved you. And this is the way that God wants us as believers to walk in agape love, the God kind of love. Watch this now. Watch me. Very few believers, even in the kingdom of God, have agape love. There's no excuse for your life not being possessed with the love of God. Everything we do is supported and backed by love. Even your faith is backed up by love. Nothing in the kingdom of God, nothing in the kingdom can work without love. In the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verses 6, it says, For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Faith works by love. Faith cannot even work without love. Without love, your faith is disqualified. I'm going to say that again. Without love, your faith is disqualified. It doesn't matter how much, you, how much faith you think you got. But without love, that faith is disqualified. See, love is like gold. Gold is so precious in some countries because it's, it's scarce and it's hard to come by. See, it's hard to come by some gape love, true love, people walking in the true love of God. It's hard to come by that love, even in the body of Christ. True agape love is precious in the body of Christ. It's very precious. Even though there's an abundant supply of the God kind of love, more than enough to go around for everyone in the kingdom. But yet it seems to be scarce among the believers. It's more than enough to go around, but yet it seems like it's scarce among the believers. There's talk of love everywhere. Church people always talking about love. It's practically in everyone's mouth. Love, love. Everyone listening to me right now, you think you have the love of God. You have it until it's tried. All of us can walk in love until that love is tried. That's when it will be determined whether you really got the agape, the God kind of love functioning, manif uh, manifesting in your life. So you can have love until you're tried and then all of a sudden you drop your love walk. See, the most important time to have love is when you're tried. Amen. So we talk love, you think you have love, but you have it until you tried. Then all of a sudden, you start st st saying there's no love. See, the problem wasn't with the person that you didn't think that had love. The problem was with you, was God was trying to build up your love. You have it until it's tried. Everybody in the church got love until they're tried. Then all of a sudden you start saying there's no love. You're right. You don't have any. 
Gold is very much desired. Men that know its value will search diligently for it. They'll go miles underground or under the water and undergo all kinds of difficulties to obtain it. Even to the point of putting their lives on the line for gold. Are you willing to put your life on the line for love? When it comes to loving people, those that don't treat you right, don't do you right, that talks about you, lie on you, and all kind of other evil things. That's when you have to put your life on the line with the walk and walk the walk of God. Walk in the love of God. Is it easy? No, but Jesus said, your cup unto me. My way is easy. I'm a bird of the light. You can't love people uh, without Jesus. Because some people got Jesus and still don't love folk. So one thing about gold, after you find it, you have to protect it. And keep thieves from stealing it. That's the same way with your love for uh, your, your, your love walk. Once you get it, once you start walking in it, you got to protect it. In the book of 1 Corinthians 4 and 7, say, but we have this treasure. See, love is a treasure. Faith is a treasure. Both of those are treasures. Both of those things work for us. Both of them. Love works for us. Love causes our faith to work for us. They are treasures in our bodies. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels inside our temples that the excellency of the power of God may be, may be of God and not of us. See, when you love somebody, it has to be the agape love, the God kind of love. It has to be the love of God and not the love of, of, of Euros and Sergio. It has to be the love of God being manifest, demonstrated. God can manifest his love through you if you allow him to. But we'll find many excuses, different excuses, to walk out on the love of God. Listen to this, 1 Corinthians 4 and 7, let me read it again. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power of God may be, may, power may be of God. This love that we're walking in, it's got to be of God. It just can't be any kind of love. It's got to be agape love, the God kind of love. And not of us. See, because of us, we love until you do us wrong, and then we're ready to fight you. In the book John 10.10, 10, you know John 10.10, 10, it said, the thief cometh not. He's coming not, but for to steal. He comes to steal the love of God from you. Anything that God wants you to operate in, the enemy wants to steal it. He he comes to steal your love. That's why he's always sending somebody to rub you the wrong way. Because if he know if he can steal the steal you out of the love walk of God, he can destroy your life. He can keep your blessings from getting to you. Because your faith won't operate correctly. Because your love walk is out of order. And when your love walk is out of order, your faith walk is out of order. The thief coming not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Jesus said, I'm come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. How did you get it? Because Jesus loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten life that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's love. You know how Jesus calls us to gain eternal life? By love. Dying on that cross. Giving his life for us because of love. And because he lived now, we can live all because of his love. Sometimes if we just love people, we can help them to live a better life, a more godly life, because they'll see the love of God demonstrated through our lives, and it'll cause them to want to change. And if they don't change, they have to answer to God, not to you. Every believer who truly understands the love walk, and those that are convinced of the value of walking and living the life of agape love, listen at me now, They'll do everything by all means possible to maintain their love walk. 
If you really, listen to me, if you want, really want to remain in your uh, love walk with God and with people, you will do anything by all means possible to maintain your love walk. You'll pray more. You can't stay in love if you're not praying. You'll fast more. You won't have to wait for the church to call a fast, but you'll call a fast because you'll tell the Lord, I'm having a little difficulty with this love right here, and I need to fast on this thing so I can bring my flesh under subjection. You'll do anything by all means possible to maintain your love walk. You're meditating the word of God more day and night. That it'll help you to prosper and to have a good, successful love life. You'll study to show yourselves approved. When you study the word, it's going to show you what to do and how to get it done. And anything else it might take to remain in your God kind of love. Walking in the God kind of love. Walking in the agape love. Living in the agape love. Let love be the rule of your life. And everything else will fall in order. Everything else will be okay. Watch this. 1 Peter 5, 7 through 10. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, you got an adversary. Every one of us have an adversary. As a roaring lion walk about seeking whom he may devour. I would say it like this. He walks about seeking whom he can steal the love of God from. Walking about seeing who he can get out of the love walk. He's a very crafty individual. He walks about seeking whom he may devour. He can devour your life if you refuse to walk in the agape love of God, the God kind of love, the kind of love that God loves us with. Even while we were yet sinners, the Bible said he died for us. He gave his life. He loved us. We were some miserable beings, but he loved us. Whom resists steadfast in the faith. Notice that who resists steadfast in the faith. How can you resist them by faith if you're not walking in love? That's why a lot of believers are, are, are overcome by the adversary because their faith can't work because they're not they resist the enemy, but they don't have the love to back up their faith. And the devil knows that. Look at this. Who resists steadfast in the faith? You can't resist, resist the enemy steadfast in the faith. If you're not walking steadfast in love. Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplishing your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, the God of all kinds of favor, all necessary things to help you make it through. Who has called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After that, ye have suffered a while. See, it's a suffering period when, when you have to deal with situations where you know you're showing love and the other folk is just, just hating on you, lying on you, talking about you, backbiting on you, gossiping about gossiping on you. That is, listen to this. But the God of all grace who has called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while. Whatever you're going through, hold fast to your love walk. Stay in your love walk so that this thing is going to pass over after a while. He said he's going to suffer a while, but look at what happens. After that, you have suffered a while. When you're walking in love, you still get the opportunity to do some suffering. Watch this. He said, because of that, I'm going to make you perfect. See, God be trying to perfect some of you, but you jump out the pot as soon as the heat is on. Look at what the scripture says. To make you, he said, I want to make you perfect. God be trying to perfect some of you, but you jump out the pot as soon as the heat is on. And you get the pointing spirit. You ever had that pointing spirit? 
somebody treated you bad and you start pointing down them, oh, they made me do that. Oh, I can't stand them. Are you going to let your I can't stand somebody keep you out of your, your faith, uh, keep your faith from, faith from operating properly? You know, we get the pointing finger. We always point the finger at the next person, but we can never point it at ourselves. Getting that pointing finger spirit. You start blaming others when God is trying to perfect you. You ever know why you always seem like you're always the one that, that people don't love you? Because you got the problem with love and God is trying to perfect you by using them. And usually it's church people. Can't nobody do you like a good old church person. You get the pointing spirit. You start blaming others when God is trying to perfect you. See, God is trying to perfect you. If there's people that you think that don't love you, you know how it is. Sometimes you can pass by, be, uh, going toward people and they can be talking and smiling. And as soon as you get there, they stop. And your first thing comes to your mind, they were laughing at you. Do you look like a joke? God is perfecting you. So that nothing will move you. None of these things will move you. That you can be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Because you will not allow anything to move you out of your love walk with God. So your faith can keep on being demonstrated day after day after day after day and time after time. You're being strengthened. Look at the scripture tell. He said you're going to be established and strengthened. He's establishing you and strengthening you. You are being perfected. God is trying to perfect you. He's trying to perfect your strength. He's trying to make you stronger than what you are, what you think you are. Most times when you think you're strong, you'll find out that you're weak when the love, when that love come around to be tried. Hello, hello. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He said, you're going to suffer. you suffer for a little while. The love, the love, when you're walking in that love, well, you, you, there's some suffering that you have to do. But then he said, I'm going to make you perfect. So when God is, is perfecting you, he, it's like cooking a meal. You, you, you put a little seasoning on it and you taste it. That, that, that's not right yet. So I got to add a little something else to it to make it better than what it already is. So God has added seasoning to your life. He's perfecting you, and there's time that he have to add more of a little more of this to you, a little more of trouble to you to perfect your walk, your God, your uh, 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 love walk with God and with people, your agape love, the God kind of love. He's perfecting it because he wants you to be more and more like his son, Jesus Christ, to the point that when Jesus is on the cross and they pull his beard out, it was beating him up. Uh, took, took the spear, speared him in the side, pulled all his bones out of the joint, spit on him, beat him. And then he still stay, hung up there and talking about, he, listen what he said. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. You have to look at that like that when people trouble you and, and come against you with all kind of craziness. You have to tell them, say, Father, they know not what they do. I forgive them so that you don't mess up your love walk. When you mess up your love walk, you make you mess up your faith walk. And you definitely don't want your faith walk to be messed up. Hallelujah. Are y'all getting this? Thank you, Lord Jesus. And don't be getting that point in that finger spirit. Oh, they this and they that and they this and they that. And the more you say that, the more is coming back to you. Ah, oh, Lord, help us. So you start blaming others when God is trying to perfect you. Tell the Lord, say, Lord, perfect me. Be careful what you say now if you don't mean it. <laughs> Lord, you're going to be perfected whether you want or not, because he's not going to let you remain a, a little baby all your life. Amen. You must labor hard. Listen to this. You must labor hard. Regardless of the difficulty, you must be willing to face any love challenge to maintain your love walk. I'm going to say that again. You must labor hard. You got to work hard to stay in love. You got to work at it. And regardless of the difficulty, you must be willing to face any love challenge to maintain your love walk. Whatever the challenge is, Lord, I'm willing to, I'm willing to, 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 to just remain the same all the time. 
I, I'm going I'm to I'm accept the challenge. I'm going to have to take this challenge here, but I'm not going to allow it to move me out of my love walk. But come on now. So in order to maintain your love walk, there's many challenges that's going to come and challenge you to get you off course, to get you out your love walk, to get you in that, that path of hatred and, 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 and complaining and, 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 and uh, backbiting. And gossiping on other people. So you've got to be careful. The enemy used little things to cancel your love walk. They called you to get out of love. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Every love challenge you encountered is designed to maximize your love walk. I think I'm going to say that again. Every love challenge you encounter is designed to maximize your love walk. One more time. Every love, you're going to have some love challenges. Y'all, have any of you ever had love challenges in church? Have you had any love challenges on your job? From your boss, from your supervisor, from your co-workers? But every love challenge you had was designed to maximize your love walk. You didn't just have that encounter for nothing. You had it because God was perfecting you, making you better in your love walk, making you stronger in your love walk, enabled you to do what you could not do before, enabled you to accomplish something that you thought was stronger than you, Every love challenge you encounter is designed to maximize your love walk. Say that with me. Every love challenge I encounter is designed to maximize my love walk. Listen to this. When you walk in love, you don't determine your outcome. God does. When you walk in love, you do not determine your outcome. God does. Because he watches over love. He protects love. He helps those that have the walking in love. He guards those that are walking in love. Though the enemy come against you like a flood, he can't even touch you when you're walking in love. But if you can't, if you're not walking in, in love, Every weapon that he brings against you will prosper. But your love will cause your faith to operate. If you cooperate with your faith with love, you will have no problem. Or let's put it like this. Even with the problem, you always overcome. So when you walk in love, you don't determine your outcome. God does. See, Jesus walked in love, but look at God. God determined the outcome. In Philippians chapter 2, I think it's verses uh, 8, uh, verse 5 around in there, it said, And God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name at the name of Jesus. Every knee got to bow and every tongue got to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Why? Because Jesus loved the world so much. They, were, they killed him. They beat him. They tried to destroy him. They tried to take him down. But his love lifted him. His love promoted him. When you walk in love, you don't determine the outcome. God does. God determined the outcome of Jesus Christ. And you could you look at the outcome that he had. Look at the outcome that Jesus got because of love. Is there anybody higher than Jesus? Is there any name higher than Jesus' name? Is there any other name that you got to bow down to other than Jesus? Is there anyone that you can call on other than Jesus? You can call, but you won't get an answer. So God determined the outcome. When you, when you walk in love, you don't determine your outcome. God does. And I'd much rather for God to determine my outcome than me to determine my outcome. Because he knows what's best. He knows where to get me where I need to go. But most of our trials is trials right through a love situation. And nowadays the devil is sending his chief demons to try to cancel our love walk.
so he can rob us of our faith. Don't let nothing take you out of your old love walk. Don't let your parents move you out your love walk. Don't let auntie them move you out your love walk. Don't let your cousin them move you out of your love walk. Don't let your brothers and your sisters take you out of your love walk. Don't let your co-workers take you out of your love walk. Don't let your best friend take you out of love walk. Because you want your faith to work all the time. Love, listen to this. Love causes God to get involved with you and your difficulties and challenges. Love causes God to get involved with you and your difficulties and your challenges. Love caused God to get involved with Jesus and his difficulties. When they, when they, they put him in the grave, God made sure that Jesus didn't stay in that grave. He rose on the third day morning and living right now. God determined his outcome. Look at this. He even put him on the right hand. Jesus is now seated on the right hand of God, making intercession for me and you. That when we handle matters of love just like he handled it, we are already seated in heavenly places. In Christ Jesus. All because of love. Woo! Love is powerful, y'all. Love, I ain't, I'm not talking about that love, you euros and Sturgill, friendship love and, 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 and uh, sexual love. And that's another thing. Women, men will tell you they love you. <laughs> men will tell you they love you uh, for sex. And some of y'all just believe anything. It, that's the game that we play. You know, yeah, I love you. No, they don't. You, after a while, they didn't have enough sex. They're going to leave you. So you need some God kind of love to make your life for, to make your life fulfilled and complete. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I said, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, I'm feeling good up in here, up in here, up in here, up in here. Are oh, y'all with me tonight? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Something good is happening. I, I feel somebody love, love getting strong. I feel a love muscle moving now. Hallelujah. That muscle of love is going to get stronger and stronger from this day forward in the name of Jesus. Every adversary that come against you, you're going to ignore their craziness and still walk in love. Notice what I say. You don't have to be up under them. You don't have to stick your nose up their tail for them to love you because they probably want. So you leave. You keep on loving them. Go about your business and stay safe. And God is going to promote you. A lot of our tests that we failed was because of love. And a lot of our blessings that we did not walk into was, is because of love, of love failure. A love failure will cause you not to get what God has for you. And it's not God. Your faith just can't operate without your love. So it's your fault that it's not operating. It's your fault that you didn't, you didn't uh, walk into what God has for you. Because in order for you to walk into the door of God and into the presence of God, you got to walk in there with love. Because God is love. And he that loveth not, watch this, he that loveth not knoweth not God. And because God is love. And if you've got the God in you, then you should be able to handle anybody, no matter what they're saying, what they're doing. They can be talking about you, laughing at you, joking at you, joking on you, and all kind of crazy stuff. And you still got the love of God. Listen at this. They beat Jesus up. And Jesus still kept on loving them. So this is where God wants us to be as believers. To love, to love, to love, to love. Yes, you don't love what people are doing to you. You don't love what the enemy is doing to you. But you love the individuals. You say, that's a hard case there, Pastor. Well, that's all right. It's a hard case. But you better watch out what God is going to do with you, do for you. And you pass that hard class. He's going to promote you. He's going to bring you into a place that you never was before. So walk in love. Walk in it. Sometimes you just have to know, choose your own battles. Some battles ain't worth even getting involved in. Listen at me. So love causes God to get involved with you and your difficulties and challenges. When you have love, God is involved with that situation. Whatever you're in right now, if you're walking in love, God is in there with you. 
Romans 12, 19 through 21, in these verses that I'm going to read, these verses, uh, God tells us what to do to walk in love. See, God got answers for us. We just have to search the scriptures to find them. In these scriptures, God is going to show us what to do to walk in love. Watch this. In the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 19 through 21, he said, Dearly beloved, look at he even call you love. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. Have you ever been there? You want to go and tear somebody up. You want to take vengeance on them. That hurt my feelings. That, that did me wrong. Lord, if I could catch hold to. But look at what the scripture say. Dearly beloved. Dearly who is still loving. Avenge not yourselves. Don't you take revenge. But rather give place unto wrath. Give place to God to do the correcting for God to pour out the wrath, for God to pour out the things upon them. Watch this. Daily beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, God said, vengeance is mine. I will repay, say the Lord. Don't ever think that somebody doing you wrong, they'll get in the way. They just haven't made it. Their court date just haven't come up yet. And if they keep living, their court date is going to come up pretty soon. And God will take vengeance on them for you. Not the way that you want them to take vengeance. Because a lot of times somebody do us wrong. We want God to kill them. Thank God y'all ain't God. Because you'd, be uh, uh, you'd be worse than the pandemic. Watch this. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. You keep on loving and let God do the repaying. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, you better listen at this. Therefore, if the one that hurt your feelings did your wrong hunger, the one that lied on your stove from your hunger, feed him. Feed him the word of God. <laughs> feed him the word of God. Feed him. If he thirsts, give him a Pepsi Cola, Coca Cola, RC. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. You're doing something by doing, by walking in love, you're causing the individual to have to deal with God. Be not overcome of evil. See, love will never allow evil to overcome. Jesus didn't allow what those evil folk did to him and put him on that cross. He did not allow evil to overcome. He kept on loving them. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. When somebody doing you wrong, do something good for them. Find something to do for them. Yeah, I know you don't want to do it. Find something to do because you're walking in the agape love of God. You're walking in the agape love. You're walking in the God kind of love. And you're not going to allow anybody to rob that or disturb that or separate you from that love walk with God. Because if they can get your love walk, they got your faith walk. And if that faith walk is gone, it's over with. Because without faith, it's even impossible to please God. So how can you please God if you lose out and you start walk, you stop walking in love? Your faith don't operate, therefore you can't please God. What's this? Don't you allow, listen at me church, don't you allow what people do to you on earth make you stop doing what is required of you from heaven. I think I'm going to say that one again. Don't you allow what people do to you on earth make you stop doing what is required of you from heaven. Heaven requires you to love them. What they do to you on earth, if you listen at the voice of the adversary, you would try to get them back. You're not in the get back business. You're in the give and love business. So stop, don't allow what people do to you on earth. Make you stop doing what is required of you from heaven. First Peter, first Peter one and seven. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Ooh, glory. <laughs> ah, Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Because everybody listening under the sound of my voice is walking in the agape love of God. And nothing from the outside shall disturb the peace of God that's on the inside of them to cause them to lose their, their love walk. 
Hallelujah. First Peter 1 and 7 said, watch, that the trial or the trying of your faith being much more precious than of gold, remember what our subject matter was, love is more valuable than gold. When people find gold, they go to all types of, uh, 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 how would I say it? They, they'll go out their way to protect it. And that's the way we should be when we're walking in the love of God. It should be more valuable to us than gold. And we should do everything within our power and our means to protect that love walk. Nothing. Watch this. That the trial of your faith be much more precious than that of gold that perish. Don't be tried with fire. Might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. All gold must be tried by fire. All born again believers must be tried by fire. Your love walk is going to be tried by fire. Your faith is going to be tried by fire. Just like gold. You, you know, they got to take gold through fire. Because if they don't take gold through the fire, they don't even know whether it's real gold. Every born again believer got to be tried by fire because if you're not tried by fire, we don't know whether you you never know whether you're a, a, a bona fide, certified born again believer. <laughs> Why is gold placed in fire to determine whether it's pure gold? And I remember looking at TV years ago as a little boy, and they used to call say something about the gold was fool's gold. In other words, it looked gold, but it wasn't gold. That's the way it is in the body of Christ. You got some some people in church, they look the part, but they're fools go. They're not the real deal. Your love will be tested to determine whether it's fake, legitimate, or counterfeit, which is known as fool's gold. Luke 6.32 says, for if you love them, Look, you need to yell it out, tell the devil, say, devil, my, 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 my love is real. I'm walking in the agape love of God. I live in the agape love of God. And you will not rob me of my love walk. Oh, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Woo, thank you, Jesus. Luke 6.32. There's nothing good like a good love fight. Don't let nobody talk you out of a love fight. I'm not talking about physical fight now like that. I'm talking about you're going to love in the midst of that fight, in the midst of that battle, in the midst of that uh, trying time, in the midst of that challenge, in the midst of that situation with somebody doing you, the, the, trying to do the worst thing they can do to you, but yet you, you're fighting a good fight. Watch this, Luke 6, 32. For if you love them which love you, what thing have you? For sinners also love those that love them. Now, this that ain't no real love when you just you just love somebody that love you. Anybody can love somebody that love them. But you have to love them, those who don't love you. That's the difficult part. That's the part that God wants us to get to, that we can love those that don't love us. And you know when people don't really care about you. You know when they don't love you. You can feel it. You know you got any kind of discernment. You know in your heart. Because you can feel it flowing from them, you know. They don't have to say nothing. Just you, you feel it. Amen. In my neighborhood where I where I live, you know, I live around a lot of Caucasian, and so a lot of times I put them to the test. Cause I see them and I they they want to walk walk by and don't say nothing. I say, hey, how you doing? <laughs> I'm gonna say something to you. See what you say. And usually I get something out of them. Uh, or go and pet the dog, and that they, oh, they really love you. Then when you pet that dog, okay, let me get back on track. Let me get back on track. For if you love them which love you, what thank have you? What thank have you? you know? In this since this pandemic and this election has been going on, we discovered that there's a lot of preachers that don't have love or not walking in love. A lot of them, and a lot of them are Caucasian preachers. Preachers that y'all looked up to before. Preachers that y'all almost bowed down to before and you thought they were God, but they don't have the love of God. 
I don't even want to be identified with evangelicals. Because they don't have no love. They have a lopsided love. They love one party, but they don't love the other party. They love one president and won't love the other president. And then they'll tell you to pray for this one, but they never prayed for the other one. That's not true love. That's not agape love. That's not even love. And God is not even, uh, even hearing them. Their faith is not even operating no more. Thank God for revealing all of them to us. Don't get mad with me. Just be glad your eyes has been opened. For if you love them which love you, what thank have you? For sinners also love those that love them. There's an abundance of counterfeit love even among believers. Counterfeit lovers. And anyone caught counterfeit will be locked out of, out of faith. If you caught counterfeit love, you're going to be locked out of your faith walk. A counterfeiter is locked up. The test of our legitimate walk with God is love. Love is the determinative factor whether you are a legitimate child of God or not. I'm going to say that again. I, I'm going to say it again. I got to say it again. The test of our legitimate walk with God is love. Love is the determinative factor whether you are a legitimate child of God or not. If you don't have love for your brother, you are a bastard. And if you don't have, it's a legit, because God is love, and he that loveth not knoweth not God. The legitimate determinative factor is your love, if you have love for walking in, uh, uh, love everybody. And walking in love, agape love, the God kind of love. The God kind of love, that's not racist, the God kind of love. That's not injustice, the God kind of love, that's equality. Well, I said, love will help, help us overcome any and everything the enemy can throw at us. Love will help us overcome any and everything that the enemy can throw at us. I'm getting close to finish. I'm almost finished, almost there. Love is the enemy's, watch this now. This is powerful. Love is the enemy's greatest adversary and the believer's greatest weapon. That's why the scriptures say the weapon of our warfare, not, not mighty, but powerful, not, not, not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down. Listen there, love is mighty. So mighty to the point that it'll pull down strongholds. So love is the enemy's greatest adversary and the believer's greatest weapon. Love is powerful. Love is awesome. Love is great. Scriptures say love. Amen. It pulled down strongholds. It works mighty through God. It works mighty through God. Gagape love works mighty through God. When we're, in, we're walking in love, it works mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, things that want to get a stronghold on you. When you keep on loving, it'll pull down the strongholds because of love. Love is strong. Love is mighty. Love is powerful. Love, love will lift you up. <laughs> It'll keep you from going down. Nobody can hold you down when you got the love of God in you because you are God's responsibility. God's going to look after you. God's going to protect you. God's going to keep you. God's going to bless you because you are one that he can count on to walk in love no matter what comes your way or whoever try to harm you, do you wrong, lie on you, talk about you, cheat on you, and all kind of crazy stuff. You are still walk in the agape love of God. Now, let's get this straight now. If somebody, you know that they don't give two hoots about you, Love don't mean that you're going to go sit to their table and eat their bread. Because you might eat something that you regret you ate. Love means I keep on loving and I keep on treating them right, even though they're trying to do me wrong. And watch who come out on top. Guarantee you, watch who come out on top. Because you are being perfected every time you have a test that comes against your love walk with God. Because if your love is out of order, faith is out of order. God bless you, and I'm finished for the night. I love y'all so much, I don't know what to do with all this love. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you, Jesus. Some of you got to go home now and release some people out your heart. You got to go now and get on your knees and release some people and let them go. I don't mean you let them run over you. That's not, that's not what God means. He don't mean for you to let nobody run over you, but you keep on loving them. Get them out your heart. Don't let them, don't beat them up and put them right in your heart. Let them go. Love will let them go. God will deal with that and he will perfect you through the situation. All right. If there's anyone now that I'm pray, I'm going to pray for you that God will release his anointing upon you and love. Father, in the name of Jesus, I touch and agree with every individual that's under the hearing of my voice and those that will listen in the future to this broadcast. I release the anointing of love in their heart that they have the love of God that will pass all understanding in Jesus' name. That love that will pass all knowledge, oh God, that they will love him and don't even know how they did it. But we decree and declare that love, oh God, will grow strong and strong in their lives, in their spirit each and every day. I decree and declare that there's nothing, no weapon that the devil can use against them to rob them of their love, that they will walk in agape love all the days of their lives. And Lord, none of these things that come against them to try to move their love shall prosper. And we'll bless you and we thank you for making them strong in the Lord and in the power of your might, Lord. And we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. Amen. If there's somebody now that you might be have a, a, a love challenge, could be in your family, could be in your, your spouse, uh, could be your children, could be uh, your uh, co-workers, whatever. If, or if you just want to get to know Christ, because you need help. And God is the only one that's able to help you do this kind of stuff. You can't do it in the flesh. You can't do it in the natural. You just, you just can't. It just won't work. You'll, you'll be destroyed trying to do it yourself. Just repeat this prayer after me. You can give your life to Christ and let love come into your life. See, God is love. And when Christ comes into your heart, love comes into your heart. Help you to love your enemy, the ones you couldn't love before. Just repeat this prayer after me, please. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that Jesus Christ died on the cross, shed his blood, gave his life, that I can have life and that more abundantly. I open the door to my heart and I receive you, Lord Jesus, as my, as my Lord, as my Savior, as my soon coming King. I believe that you were buried in the grave, but I also believe that you got out of the grave on the third day. And I decree and declare that my life belongs to you from this night forward. I thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Well, God bless you. Time is coming, gone again for another uh, broadcast. We love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Amen. Share it on your, have a watch party. Just have a party. Uh, uh, <laughs> share it with your neighbors, your friends, whoever you can share with. God bless you. I love you. And remember, don't call it the way you see it. Call it the way you want it to be. Jesus loves you. I love you. God bless you.